guys uh, helping us out with that. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, the speed mode looks good. X mode is good, but there's a lot more staining. You can see there's a square actually that because the, ref the, the refreshes are so few and far between, that square is just going to be there for pretty indefinitely until you force a refresh. But even then, when you go back to the menu to force a refresh, and then you go back to there, sometimes things remain. So all the little icons are still there. So X mode is very valuable. Oh, jeez, an echo. Come on. <laughs> oh, Lord. I have one mic going. Oh, done. Perfect. Okay. So... Uh, what we have here, everyone, why I went off camera is because I went to the other room where they're actually uh, working on the Big Me stuff right now. So they're going to be they're going to be uh, putting together a Big Me review video after we film it and I uh, do some voiceovers and stuff like that. So we are going to answer Stephen Prosser's question. What is the new case like? This is a really nice case. This is a fantastic case. Reason being, it has physical page turn buttons. That is something that devices just do not have anymore. So what you do, it is very, very simple. It does not require you to go to any settings. It doesn't require you to calibrate it or do anything else. It is just simply a snap process. So you just go like that and you're done. You're actually done. That's it. So we're just gonna go to the storage. We'll open up a book and we'll show you exactly what's going on here. So we're gonna open our favorite Christmas Carol, our favorite yarn, and we're going to, uh, let's go to the um, uh, table of contents, which usually does work. And we'll go over to the first of the three spirits. I guess it doesn't work. Okay, we'll do fast nav. Tap the center, nav over here. All right, so let's get out of X mode because it does look pretty bad. Mode, and we're gonna go to normal mode. Normal mode. This is this is what your your reading experience is gonna look like on this. So when you do have your case in, you can do your page turns. Stephen Prosser. So there you are. <laughs> it's a great case, guys. Uh, the inside of the case is this very nice, thinly stacked leather. The outside looks like a panel of brushed aluminum, but it isn't. It is very nice and cold, actually. It's the I don't know what kind of material it's made out of. It's almost like it has a little bit of a hardened outside, but the interior core skeleton of the unit is silicone, and you do have a little bit of a flex to it. It's a really high quality case, and the color of the bezel that surrounds the physical buttons here, this surrounding part, matches the back of the unit. And do you have to worry about detaching it and reattaching it X amount of times? No, it does not, because you just have the little um, pins here and they just snap into, they just snap into the side like that. So you can go ahead and turn the pages as you see fit. Let us answer some questions because, uh, as we were, um, uh, embarrassingly struggling through that, uh, we have some questions here. B6BB has a very long name there. Did Onyx address the GPL violation? Um, I don't know if that's Google Play, if, it's, uh, if that's what you're asking, but Onyx does not have official Google Play on their unit. You do have to go to uh, settings and you have to go to applications if you're just joining us and you go to apps and you go to enable Google Play then you link your GSFID and then after that you have to wait anywhere between 9 to 24 hours for your device to become certified and then you can go to Google settings and jump in there. Uh, Stephen Prosser, yes, no problem. <laughs> Sorry I had to go off uh, camera there to get a case, but uh, yeah, it's a very recommended case because honestly devices just don't give you physical buttons anymore, so it's good to have that. Um, I'm wondering if the page turning would work on Kindle as well. Yes, it, it will actually work on many things. For example, if we go to storage and we go to a PDF. Doo, 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 doo. It's a big PDF. It's a very big PDF. So it will still work on here too. It, it basically triggers a swipe left and swipe right through the unit, but in an instant kind of action. It, it bundles everything into a start and stop action. Very conveniently on these little buttons. So it does work on um, 
It'll work on a whole bunch of uh, applications. It'll work on basically anything that requires you to go left and right. It'll work on the note-taking app. It'll switch pages, etc. cetera. Uh, let's see. I... Ayush, I believe you were here last week. Thank you very much. Why e-readers slash e-note takers like these and other Chinese brands unavailable in major sites such as Amazon and Best Buy? Actually, um, Onyx is available and Boyu and Dasung on Amazon uh, dot whatevers. Most of the Amazons around the world, they are available and you can buy them. But the major thing with this is why we do these lives is because although you can find them on these websites, you can't you can't try them. You can't walk into like a Barnes and Noble, go to the Nook booth and just try these out. You have to rely on people's, well, words telling you, you know, this is good build quality. This is poor build quality. You have to just rely on people to say stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's why that's the, the biggest problem is that, you know, they're just not available for, for, for people to walk in and kind of try before you buy. And a lot of places, even if you buy it, you can't return it because then there might not be returns on open box items and much smaller stores, even like our store department, we, we can't have people, you know, trying $1,200 guidos and then sending them back. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Stephen Prosser, thank you for the answer. No problem. Michael seems to be, um, modding the chat, which is very nice. Cause, uh, yeah, he knows, uh, open source licensing and stuff. So Mike, please, uh, chime in there if you, you know, answer some people's questions because I, I don't know what uh, the GPL violation was. Michael Garcia, it would be nice if they made the case to prop up the device in tent mode. Correct. As you see here, the adhesion of the case is at the tip. When most cases have the adhesion 60 to 50% of the way through so that you get a little bit of a bend. Alternatively, they can add one origami fold like this, like Amazon does. And then you could flip this around and you could jut out the origami fold kind of like that. And it would create a stand because yes, the reality is that this does have a uh, very good rotational. Um, this does have a uh, auto rotate or you could, you know, rotate it yourself. So you could go like that, but unfortunately you can't prop the, you can't prop it up in this case because the selling point of this case is the physical page turn buttons not the um not the actual uh stand so yeah unfortunately the bigger ones do the nova sorry the note air the note air one two uh the note three they all have the ability to prop it up but uh for the most part this one does not have that so Unfortunately, it is just kind of looking this way. We have a lot of questions about this on the videos themselves. Can you use other pens? And you realize why I have all the pens here. In fact, I don't even have the Nova Air pen here. It's in the other room, but it's the same thing as this one. So uh, it's very magnetized. And yes, even if you use the Air pen for the, uh, the Note Air, it will snap to the side. So it, it does snap to the side all the same. So you can use the Air 1 pen, which I absolutely love, which they actually got rid of. They don't use this anymore. They use the new Pen 2 Plus, it's called, and it's not a very good pen. You can use the Fujitsu pen, and I believe the eraser does work, yes. So the Fujitsu pen is quite nice. The back should work, too. Yes, it does. That's fantastic. You can even use the Supernote pen. Now, legally, we have to say we can't recommend you use the Supernote pen on here because it could possibly scratch your device, but... The recent line of Onyx products does put a very, very thick factory screen protector baked on there from the in, from the um, the production line, and it's uh, it's very hardened. So you could get away with using a Supernote pen on here, although I wouldn't recommend it. And yes, you can use the new Big Me pen. <laughs> they were they're they're done uh, all the roll on the the big pen. So when uh, before we started the live, I said, "Can I use it?" and uh, yeah, so um, the Big Me Pen works as well. The Big Me Pen nib is a little bit interesting. It's very rubbery and very sticky. So as you draw on the page, you get a ton of resistance, which is good or bad. It could just depend on uh, your personal feeling towards uh, note taking. But yeah, it's it's a very sticky, high grip, not very sandpapery like the Fujitsu nib is very rough and coarse. Whereas the Big Me pen is going to be, uh, this pen is 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 um, polarizing. People either love it because it's so cool and it's like well weighted, and people don't like it because it's really thick, 
Uh, it's unnecessarily heavy because it has a Bluetooth receptor and you have to charge the back in order to use the Bluetooth uh, capabilities and it doesn't even connect to a lot of units out there. So yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of a mixed bag of pen, but uh, this is going to be coming up soon on the uh, Big Me review, which actually is, uh, it's coming soon and they are using, we're going to be doing this next week, by the way, they're using the DPT color panel the 10.3 that we saw at the uh at the trade show in japan they the, the color panel is actually here we're doing uh, production on it right now so uh that's gonna be very exciting and that landed post uh when we did the poll for uh, what you guys want to see so uh please give your suggestions on youtube and facebook when we do do these polls as to what you want to see on the live showcase because there's a lot of uh, units out there, and we would like to show you as many as we possibly can, which is why we're doing them every week. Uh, let's see. Ayush, is this kind of cover built-in page turn something specific to this set, or is it something universal where Amazon might make a page turning thing, blah, blah, blah? Yes, I didn't mean to say blah, blah, blah to you. It's just uh, I got the message. So thank you very much for your comment. Yes, this one is specific to this unit. This is an Onyx Books branded unit. It has the three little pins right here that coincide with the three contact pins on this side. So you would put this down like so. And now they have two magnets there and two magnets here that help center and bind everything that just snaps together like that. And there are magnets here as well that keep the back popped on there as well and there's a magnet on the side if you want to snap your pen to the side so the whole package once all put together looks like this so this is your this is about as protected and maxed out with accessories as you can get pen snap to the side you're open like that it's a sleep cover too so it wakes up right away and then you can just go and start making all of your notes yada 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 and away you go some people were also asking about the writing feel of this unit. The writing feel is adequate. It's it's nice. They add this um, screen protector on there, as we said, from factory. I'm going to catch some light so you can see there's a little bit of texture to it. And why they do that is because they try to artificially add a little bit of feel to the note-taking experience. But... To be completely honest, you're never going to get the best note taking on a glass panel because it's just so hard. It's you're putting more stuff in front of your eyes in the viewable surface because when you have an e-reader, let's go to a new page here. Uh, and go down here. Add new page. So when you have an e-reader like this and then you have the that's the panel and then you have the security layer they put on from factory and then you have the color array filter and then you have the wacom layer and then you have the capacitive touch layer and then you have the actual glass in front and then you put a screen protector on top that's legitimately how it works so the initial layer of you that's the initial layer of what your epd the epd is the electronic paper display that's what epd stands for and that is the panel itself it's connected with like you know a ribbon cable that connects to the actual pcb so there's all these layers on top of it so the more layers you add the 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 worse the unit looks so you will see that devices like the ink pad color by pocketbook <laughs> bp book it puck pocketbook looks fantastic because it has a it has a sunken screen and bezel and you have less obtrusive materials in front of your eyes so that's the beauty about you know raw kind of e-readers is that you don't have all the stuff in the way and, that, and that's why they, they traditionally look a lot better so just keep that in mind when you're buying something so yeah the the writing experience is fine but it's very hard and and it's like you are writing on a piece of glass so uh, something like a Fujitsu, a Quaderno is, it's just going to be, there's no comparison. It's just going to be so good when it comes to, uh, the writing experience. So we've had that. A lot of people ask about that. Uh, we also have some people on, uh, YouTube, the review that says, what about this canvas thing here? So as you can see right here, we have a single panel canvas. It's a one by one, like so. 
in order to expand that, you can click on this canvas expansion. And what this does is it actually increases the area beyond the e-reader itself. So if I wanted to do a one by two, what that means, you can see right there, I've expanded it this way. You just can't see it. So if I swipe down, that's my canvas now. And when you export this, it's going to be a very long portrait export. Alternatively, you can go back here and you can choose two by one. And when you do that, now you can move laterally if you're trying to do like a big timeline of something or a huge uh, a spreadsheet that requires you to have a more landscape feel versus a, a standing feel, a portrait feel. So that's that's why they would do that. Uh, and it's it's quite nice. And I don't recall, actually, right out of the right out of the box, I can't actually think of any other manufacturer that does that. Any other manufacturer that does this either. The amount of shapes is it's just mental. Not only do they give you shapes, they give you shapes with different line break patterns. So if I wanted to make a triangle with this weird kind of Morse code, you know, if you're doing if you're doing blueprints. You could essentially make that and be like, this is my base layer of what I want it to look like. And then you can do the solid line as like, that's the finished product. And you can draw these parallels between like, you can draw a legend. So anything with that equals like, you know, pending work. Anything with a solid line equals, you know, 100% completed. So that's really nice because then you don't have to draw that yourself. You know, you don't have to get a ruler and be like, oh man, this is taking forever. So they've thought of little life changing, life time saving things, Onyx. They've, uh, they really do have the most customizable writing experience, hands down. There is no other device that gives you quite this amount of, of features. It's just, it's an incredible amount of uh, customization. And the, the colors as well. They, that's a lot of colors for a black and white device. I don't, you know, I don't want to undersell that. That's a lot. Usually it's just black and gray and white is your eraser. Uh, George Gonzalez Laranaga. I love your videos. I want to get a device for taking notes, but I have a question. How does one window or how does window oh how does windows one note or third party apps work on this device this actually has i don't know what i'm doing there get out of there i believe i know the air 2 in the latest line does let's go to the onyx books app store and show you guys how that looks they should have one note here and they only have 48 apps so this should be a very easy thing to find swipey swipey swipe well they got nook on there i didn't actually know that should have Microsoft OneNote. So there, yeah, they have the Amazon Reader as well. The newer devices have OneNote. Let's just search for it. I might have even swiped by it. OneNote. Okay, they do. Yeah, we'll download that right now. So OneNote is actually optimized for this unit. So if you uh, watch our review videos, if you try to sideload stuff into this, that it's not meant for so like you try to sideload in some sketch thing from google play that no one's ever heard of and you know it's not optimized for the actual note taking layer it's probably not going to work that well but they have actually optimized things like amazon and barnes and noble and um uh what do you call uh microsoft OneNote for this unit specifically so that you are now able to use it with the intended latency so which means that when you draw a line it doesn't take you know three seconds to show that line it'll just do it right away also this is google play and it and after you know all the the coding workarounds that they've implemented into doing whatever they do to make it work it does work so just chalk it up to a win you do have google play on this and because this is running audio you have full speakers and it's live audio it'll it'll beep and boop and bleep and bloop all day long because it does have audio um you can download games and you can watch trailers and uh you know you can watch movies on this because you have x mode and this does have of the full the full google play experience it's not going to be like a throttled version or like a miniature version it's the full google play experience you have apps games if you have a google account you can download movies you download and rent movies if you wanted to so that's the beauty about that when OneNote does download, it'll show up here in a, in a little icon. It'll, pu it'll push there. Uh, some other people ask about the Navigation Ball. Navigation Ball 
is again one of those polarizing things people seem to like it and it's really cool because if you put it on the bottom and you go like that it's gonna like arch like that and then when you put it on the side it'll go like that and what's really nice is that it does have a lot of stuff on there so if you're looking for a back button and you maybe don't know that the back button you're like oh, oh where is it and you go up here and you're like okay that's the back button well if you don't want to go all those steps you know the back button is here as a quick key and that's what these are these are hot keys for you to use anytime you want you power on on and off the device via this you can go to the settings there's a lot of things you can do with that so just keep in mind that um, it's there for a reason you can turn it off you go to the navigation ball right here and you can turn off the navigation ball or you can toggle it on anytime you want you also have a ton of different things you can do with buttons you can add all of your buttons here you can choose what button does what you can disable it you can enable it. you can change it to the front light if you wanted to so there's a lot of stuff you can do with there um I, i'm i'm different about it i don't i don't care if it's there it's kind of nice if it's ever in the way even in normal mode it moves pretty quick you can just pop it away you pop it into the corner you know it's it's not that intrusive and i think the pros outweigh the cons so let's see how our download is doing here uh i don't think they have a download section actually and that might be tools let's look for tools Oh, there it is. Oh, that was OneDrive. Oh, they have OneDrive on here too, which is really nice. And if there's something you can't find out of their massive library of 48 apps, you can always uh, go to Google Play. So that's that's the beauty of that as well. Uh, while that downloads, let's look at a PDF because PDFs are something a lot of people want to utilize on a daily basis. Now, a lot of people ask, should I get a 7.8 for PDFs if I'm, you know, casually reading them sure you can pinch and zoom oh yeah pinch and zoom is always set to off by default you actually have to go to settings uh touch settings no nope. where is it it's one of these it's uh it's kind of buried it's called pinch to zoom and they bury it somewhere there it is enable pinch and zoom i don't know why they do that they really don't want you pinch and zooming right out of the gates uh, I'm not sure what their mentality is, but uh, the latest line of devices do all do that. So yeah, you can pinch and zoom. If you're using PDFs casually, you can be you're okay with a 7.8, and you have like the note taking ability. You can go like that. Do you want to use this if you're studying, like you know, in university or you're in the medical field, and you know you're going up to a, a client's charts, and you're like, okay, we'll give them 100 cc, or is that a thousand cc oh no it's 10.0 like you don't want to make that mistake so you you definitely want a bigger screen for pdfs if it's necessary for you to you know if it's your bread and butter if it's your job if it's your education get something bigger and to be completely honest i wouldn't even recommend a 10.3 because a piece of paper will not fit on a 10.3 and i'll tell you what we're talking about someone's a4 is basically the universal paper size for the most part. It's like the U.S. letter size mail uh, of paper. So when someone has a 7.8, that A4 page looks like that. When someone has a 10.3, that A4 page looks like that because 10.3, I think, is considered B5. If you have a 13.3, the A4 page... That A4, the A4 piece of paper, will actually fit on there. So you don't have to do any scaling. There doesn't need to be this, you know, 70% scaling effect where it's actually going to hinder the, the, the document that you're supposed to sign, you know, your legal documents that you're supposed to sign. So if, if the, the a big consensus of questions on all of our chats is if I need to run a four, what size do, should I get? The only answer to that technically is 13.3 because a four is not going to fit on anything else. It's not going to fit on anything South of a 13.3. So please keep that in mind. If you guys are, if you live and die by PDFs and you want to get an e paper device an e ink device, 13.3 is the answer to that. Ayush, I intend to buy an Ink Palm 5 as it is a glass screen and hence reflective. I wonder if it will ruin the reading experience of the previous user. What is your experience worth the buy? Ayush, thank you for commenting again. Uh, the the A... Uh, sorry, not A5. I'm looking at my page here. The, um, the Ink Palm, if you guys are unaware, is the smallest e-reader 
in the world right now. It is a five inch screen. It's fantastic, but it's really small. So it, you know, there's, there's your, there's your, there it is in your hand. That was pretty good. Oh, wow. Um, I can't draw really. So for me to do this terrible broken armed mush man hand, I mean, that's not bad. Uh, yeah. So it, unfortunately it is glass. And again, if you go back to what we were talking about, about all the layers, sure, you can go, you know, the EPD, which is not reflective. And then you go glass, can't write, which is reflective. And then you put a screen protector on there that it's not reflective. You are going to hinder what is written on the screen. And it being so small, you know, your font's going to have to be so big. Uh, it, on paper, yes, Ayush, it is, it is good for reading because it's small, it's compact, it's easy to hold. However... It's um, it's not that great if you can avoid it. If you can buy something... There's a reason 6 inches is the golden standard for e-readers. There's a reason for that. There's a reason why 7.8 is the golden standard across almost every manufacturer for uh, note-taking, compact, price-wise. It's a good balance between price and usability and everything like that. So for reading, I would honestly... Here, let's go like this. Watch this. That hitbox is weird for that, that three dots. For reading, I would go six inches or above. For note taking, I would not go six or 6.8 for note taking, although they do have them. I would go 7.8 or above. And in a perfect world, if you have the money, unfortunately, I know they're expensive, 10.3. And for anything A4 document size, 13.3 is the only one. That it's the it's the only one. The the Lumi, the Max, the Fujitsu, the DPT, those are your choices for 13.3 and that's the way to go because again, you're not going to fit you, it's just not going to fit if if you don't have the right um if you don't have the right screen size. It just it won't work. So yeah. Uh Bob Diekema, Dikema. Yeah, do you know if there's any issues with uploading and downloading PDFs from the books app from Play Store? From the oh from the box app from Play Store. The box app. I'm reading that correctly, right? From the box app. Bob, what do you mean by the box app? I will wait until you clarify, but until then, we're gonna show OneNote. Because that was asked of us. I don't know what the box app is. Or any of the books devices. I'll check that in a second. Alright. Let's skip on all past this. Uh, don't send optional data. Sure, close. So the latest devices are optimized for this. I don't know if this one is. Oh yeah, tap here to make a note. So we'll go to draw. I hope this one is optimized. Let's just see right away, okay? We're just gonna go here, go to draw. Am I on draw? I am, okay, here we go. Oh, it isn't. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, look at that. Okay, well, you know what? That actually opened our eyes too. The, and this is what I was talking about earlier. If you download an app that is not meant to be used with the particular device at hand, for example, this, watch, I'm going to write note. Like, look at that. That was way too slow. You can't live with that. There's no way you can live with that. And if you cross-reference that with the fact that when you're on a note-taking page, I mean, it's, it's, it's liquid fast, lightning fast. So when you're on OneNote... That's actually not that great. Now, why I'm so surprised on this is because the Air 2, the Lumi, the Lumit, the Lumi 2, uh, the Note 5, I haven't checked that yet, but I have checked these two. This one and this one are optimized for OneNote. So on this app, downloaded from Onyx or sideloaded or anything, it will work quick, as quick as the note-taking app itself. This one doesn't seem to be doing that. So unfortunately, I can't say that the Nova Air is optimized for OneNote because it just does not seem like that is the case. Uh, it doesn't seem to be working well at all now that I look at it. So that's that's not uh, very good. So yeah, I hope that answers the whole OneNote thing. Um, things like Amazon and uh, all of your e-reader apps are going to be working perfectly fine. So uh, that's totally fine. Uh, what other questions did we have on this? The Onyx Books store. Yes, so not the app store, but the store. The store on the Nova Air and all Onyx products is is not good. I mean, it's, it's good that they're there, but for the most part, as you can see, it's going to be Shakespeare stuff. It's going to be like public domain, royalty-free, uh, Project Gutenberg stuff. It's just going to be 
a simple bookstore where you just download things that you could download online by typing in Google, you know, like Romeo and Juliet dot EPUB. And it's like public domain, just download it. Christmas Carol. That's why we always have Christmas Carol on everything because it's free and it's just like a basic book. And that's what you're going to find here, unfortunately. It's just going to be more of the same, very simple things. So uh, don't expect too much from the store of Onyx or the app store of Onyx. That's why Google Play is here and that's why they went through the the efforts of setting all this up and making it do such a difficult coding reroute in order for you to use that. So um, that's that's the way it goes. George Gonzalez Larenga, again, thank you very much. I think I should buy the Note 2. Oh, we have a donation from George or Jorge. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Thank you very much. That is very much appreciated. Um, yes, if you have any additional questions, George, please give us a uh, drop us a line. You can drop us a line on Facebook. You can email us. You can uh, hit up uh, the comment section of this video. I'd be more than happy to assist you. Uh, thank you very much. That's that's very nice. Uh, you should buy the Note 2 Air then. Uh, sorry, the uh, the the Note Air 2. The Note Air 2 is is very nice. Uh, the margin it's it's very marginally upgrade uh, over the one. So if you do this, the Air 2 is um, four gigs of RAM versus the three gigs of RAM. Uh, it has a 2.0 gigahertz processor versus a 1.8. It has 128 gigs of onboard versus 64 gigs. Uh, this is this is navy blue and this is blue. So the, the panel has changed a little bit. But the biggest thing is that it's Android 11 versus 10. That's, that's the big boy because then you're going to get into the optimized apps. You're going to have the latest version of Android for when you do do your... Uh, Google Play downloads and all that kind of stuff. But it, it, is it night and day difference from these two guys? No, they're fairly similar. And in fact, I do believe this is a couple more pennies than this one. However, well, if you want Android 11 and a faster processor and more space, you don't have a choice because we live in a world of no expandable SD. So there's no SD on there and there's no SD on there. They don't want you to have SDs anymore because they want you to buy the 64 and buy the 128 to spend more money to so that they can make more money it's you know the way it works right it's the same with cell phones they have the iphone 12 and they say why don't you buy the 256 why don't you buy the 512 it's like because it's more money and then they say well if you want to expand your storage it's the way to go so unfortunately yes that's the way uh that's the way it goes uh, what else do we have some questions on? We have, uh, huh, I'm scanning through, rotate. Uh, yes, yeah, so rotate we showed you. You can go to the rotate here. Uh, you can rotate it all four ways. And uh, it does look different in certain ways. Like if you have uh, landscape in your book, it's going to look better with the case on there because then you have the physical page turn buttons going left and right. Much like what most of the... Um, uh, Kindle Oasis and uh, the Kobo Sage, the Kobo Libra. They've been heading that direction too, where they have physical page turn buttons on one side. Onyx wanted, how do you say it, have their cake and eat it too or whatever. So they wanted the unit to look the way they did like that. And then they have the option to sell you more stuff, unfortunately. If you buy the case, pop it in there, and now you have physical page turn buttons. So like they've got both ends of it they had the the unit the way they wanted it to be and and the um physical page turn uh button rail another question uh please excuse me it's really dry <laughs> um we gotten into the, the the chappy season it's very dry out here another question is this is a battery case no this is not like the oasis or the kobo power cover this one does not have any battery internals in it so this one will just be an aesthetic case for you to add on your uh, physical page turn buttons. It does not have a uh, battery in there. It doesn't have any reliant. It doesn't, doesn't do anything. It doesn't increase your battery or anything like that. So that is that. Apps. Yes, you can long press on things and uninstall them. You can uninstall, manage, optimize, add them to a group. So you do have a lot of the same functionality you would have on a regular Android device on this. And why I say regular Android device... Uh, sorry, I had to hit that T. It is really dry out here. It's nice and it's cold. I like that. But 
one thing we want to lay down is that it's hard to say the difference between like an Android device and like an e-reader now because as these devices get more advanced, this is an octa-core processor, Android enabled, you know, Google Play enabled note taking slate. It just doesn't have a reflective LCD LED screen like a smartphone or the computer screen you're watching on right now. It has an e-paper screen. And with that, you do have a lot of limitations because it's very slow. And that that's the reality is that e-readers are slow. You know, you're not going to kid anybody. You're not going to you're not going to fool yourself and say my e-reader is lightning fast. Well, sure, but the screen will never be able to keep up with you. And that's why you have these modes. These modes are so important. And I believe I want to say, and Mike might be able to uh, assist me if he's still here. I want to say Pocketbook was the first guys to have A2 mode. I'm trying to think if there's, there's anyone else that had A2 mode first. But anyways, A2 mode has been a golden standard of e-readers for quite some time. A2 mode allows you to do things that no e-reader could possibly do prior so on normal mode, for example, if we go back to uh, the Neo browser and we go and watch this video, this is the video in normal mode. This is like some royalty-free landscape. Look how absolutely, that is unwatchable. I, I don't know what's going on. I do. He's walking through a meadow, but you know what I mean. Or not a meadow, a forest. It looks terrible. It's because all these little pixels are trying so desperately hard to get to where they need to be to create the image so you can see. On something that doesn't move so much like that, that's fine. But see, even me tapping the screen, it's like, oh, what should I do? That's the play button and the pause button. It looks terrible. And that's why these devices have modes. So if you go to speed mode, you're like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And I see the people walking down there. It's, you know, it's balancing out a little bit. And then you go down here to A2 mode. This is the golden child here. A2 mode is going to up the refresh. This is going to be much quicker now. That's going to be much quicker. To be fair, the play, the pause button still look like garbage, but still, you know what I mean. But with this, is it's actually going to delay the refresh and incre increase the refresh, sorry, but it's going to delay the system refresh. So which means is that you see all that stuff in the background, it's still there. And if we go to the absolute fastest thing ever, heaviest ghosting, the video has sped up to a point where it's almost 23 to 27 frames a second. It's, it's a normal video at this point. You can watch it. You can watch movies on this unit. We can't show any movies because, well, we don't own and we don't produce any movies. So we can't show you any movies. But X mode is a is, is a godsend in terms of the e-reader world because it's opened up the fact that you can now watch videos comfortably and here let's crack out the audio here oops there you go like you know it's stereo speakers get out of there uh, i got stereo speakers on here i can turn on the sound i can listen to it i can watch my movie and there and it and it's and here it looks good you know all this other stuff around surrounding it's gonna you know, be a little bit distracting, but, uh, yeah, that's the beauty about modes. So if you guys are asking about modes, I mean, it, it, it's, it's almost required now. Everybody uses modes, high sense, pocketbook, uh, you know, boy, you, I think was one of the earlier adopters of modes. So that, that's the beauty about that. Uh, Adrian character says, hi, Mike K. Yes. He says hello to Michael. I use Hey, quick question. Does the lemon read have night light slash blue light filter? I found it on a black Friday sale at a steal. Does the lemon reed have a blue light filter? You mean a warm lighting? Um, I don't know if it has a warm lighting. I can find that out for you right now, actually. Um, but I don't know if it has warm lighting. Actually, you know what? What I'm going to do, uh, if you go to our YouTube channel, you can look at... It should be a fairly recent video, too. Um... If you go to our YouTube channel, we do have the lemon read in the latest 20 videos we've done, and it'll show you everything you need to know. It's uh, basically the same thing as the um, 
Uh, it's the same thing as the P6, except the Lemon Read is a little bit better. It has an SD card and um, it's running a later version of Android, I think, and uh, speakers. It has speakers on the Lemon Read and the, the Boyu P6 does not. Boyu's having a little bit of trouble right now. We're not going to get into that, but uh, they're, they're not doing so hot. They're, they're pretty dire for them right now, so... Uh, yeah, if you had any questions about that, we can definitely hit you up a little bit later. Uh, colors, how they work on here. We're just basically looking at the, um, uh, the Nova Air review video for any questions. And if you guys have any questions live, we can answer them for you. Colors, so as they appear, colors aren't really colors. They are and they aren't. So if we get a brush, so there's your black. And if you have the desire to choose any other shades of gray, you have a couple shades of gray you can use. <laughs> like so. Until you get to white. And white oops, and white is bo basically just going to be your eraser. So we'll just show you right there. It's just going to erase. All of these ones right here, the red, green, and blue, they're going to be ever so subtly different grays. Yeah, you, it's not, I mean, you see, it does a little bit of a refresh. It's going to be undiscernible with the naked eye and especially on camera that's just going to look black to all you guys this is going to be red so as you're grading things you got to make sure you know you look at here for reference you're like okay i'm on red you know johnny got this one wrong this one wrong this one wrong he's going to be held back and then you go over to sarah gunderson who's super smart and you're like okay she's in the excelled uh class and you're you know this will turn green when you export and these will all be red and this will be black uh, gray etc and they have actually added more on the later devices they've added like uh, I think they even have a yellow under certain brush types so uh, stay tuned uh, keep your eyes out for those they're very useful but they're hard to deal with when you know you're drawing like that because you now I got red green and blue and I'm, I'm starting to forget like which one is which so yeah uh, Ayush I saw the review but there's no mention of a warm light oh the like the the lemon reed you know what? I can't say at the top of my head. I don't remember. We do a lot of devices here. I'm not sure if they have a warm light. I'm pretty sure the P78 has one, but I'm not sure if the Lemon Reed has one. Uh, we should have had a you should have had a glow light seg segment in that video somewhere. I would I would double check on that one. Uh, we missed a uh, comment. Clifford said um, I'm currently on the Nova 3 and 100% correct on note taking. Oh oh, he's answering someone else. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, uh, what are the questions that we have here? <laughs> handwriting recognition, yes. Handwriting recognition. Let's go to a new page. I'm going to tell them about that hitbox. That box is kind of... There you go. See, it's not It's not the full box. It's uh, like a little center there. So what we're going to do is turn to something a little more consistent like a ballpoint pen so that there's no... Um, uh, um, what do you call... Uh, um, oh, I can't think of it. Pressure sensitivity. So we're going to go like this. Hello... And we're gonna go cool. And why I write it like that is because when you do the handwriting change, when you go original recognition, it's gonna plomp them exactly where you've written it. So it'll be hello, Peter, and cool right there. There you go. So all of these you can move around. You can move it around, you can tap like that. And you can actually voice dictate as well if you wanna continue writing. So I'll show you that in a second. So that's original recognition. Now it's gonna revert back for when you do your reflow. Reflow is gonna jam everything up to the top left corner. It's going to justify it, it's called. So everything will be in line right there, hopefully. There you go. So you can do voice dictation as well. You can go like this. Hello, I am writing on this unit with my voice. And you've just done voice dictation. And it was that easy. Uh, very, very useful. It utilizes Google for it, so it's very quick. I think you should be able to do periods too. Here, let's try this. Here, let's go to a new line. Oh, I can't go to new line. Oh, enter. Okay, here, watch this. Hello, comma. My name is Peter, period. Oh, I didn't. Okay, Google sometimes picks that up, but this one actually just... Um, this one actually just wrote comma and period. So you're going to have to use... Oh, that's probably why that popped up for the punctuation. So you're going to have to do some edits. But you can really jam away a whole dictation on this really quickly. You can really do a whole lot of dictation on this really quickly if you don't mind worrying about the punctuation later so that when you export you can fix it after the fact 
yeah that's pretty accurate that was that was all i don't think it made any mistakes and it did get the um uh i'm forgetting words now the not um conjugation is that right yeah whatever uh it did do the do not turns into notes so um that's uh that's very useful so uh, yeah hold on to that very useful you can also we will show you reflow recognition because i forgot you can write as well so you can go like this h and h is going to pop up there and you could go p and then p is going to pop up there and you could go e lowercase and it should be a lowercase e so there you go so you can write you can type you can voice dictate it's it's a it's a very open experience uh, Santiago Munera, Mu, Munera, I think if the little squiggly thing is above the N, it's a nya, like patino, maybe. Manga is clearly readable in that size, correct. Manga in Japan, uh, you know what I'm going to do? Oh, if we have time. While I'm doing all this, we're going to go to the App Store. Oh, no, because i got to sign in and everything. Uh, we, you, you can watch the review. that We, we do do a, a, fair, a fair deal of manga. But um, actually, if we go to the Play Store, we should be able to go to books. And I should just be able to like type in Naruto or something, if, if I'm correct. Search books. Go to the keyboard. This will give you a good idea of how like navigating this looks like. Whoops. Naruto. I should be able to get a sample, or at least show you a page. Okay, so let's just choose this volume. I might even be able to get a sample. Boom, there you go. Oh, man, aren't I intelligent? No, not with... Uh... Oh, you got to download Google Play Books to get a sample? Oh, man. All right, well, either way, yes, manga looks really good on this. Uh, I should be able to just choose something and at least look at the image here. There you go. That's manga. There, pen thrown on the table, pen drop. So that's manga. It'll look like that because traditionally in Japan, manga is anywhere between six and a half to seven and a half inches uh, diagonal. So this is what manga is going to actually look like. I think there's only one image. Yeah, but you know, that's going to be a good indication of what it's going to look like. So uh, manga is fantastic, Santiago. Um, a lot of the manufacturers that have 7.8s, 8 inches, for example, they, 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 especially in Japan, they push manga as a uh, as like a a, um, a promotional thing they'd show manga on the um on the the stock images because they want you to use it for manga like the the kobo libra 2 and the sage in japan tons of the imagery has manga on it like half is dedicated to it because yeah i mean that's what it's being sold for for the most part because you can have volumes of manga on here versus you know having an entire bookshelf covered with expensive manga so yeah that's uh, very useful for that senel antonio Br briones castillo how much language accept hebrew espanol etc very good question very easily discoverable we're going to go down here to settings languages languages espanol c si, and hebrew i don't know yes in hebrew but like Oh, which one of these is Hebrew? I'm going to say it's that one, if you can correct me. I'm going to say it's that one. So, yeah. Uh, yes, it does have um, many languages. It has Vietnamese, Romanian, uh, Portuguese, Polski, Japanese, Chinese, both traditional and uh, simplified. What's Sestina? Is that like Calatin from like Andorra and Spain? Maybe. I'm not actually sure. Uh, Seno Antonio Briones Castillo again. Which systems is better, Android or Linux for e-reader note? Senel, both are good. For example, if you have... Uh, if you have... Uh, come on. That hitbox is missing. Look at that. It's missing to add new page. Weird. Yeah, I got to hit them up about that it's actually not even doing it okay well this thing's garbage no i'm just kidding it's a, it, this is a very good note taking e reader so if you have linux versus android android is going to use way more battery and it's going to be way more unstable meaning things will crash things you know things aren't going to work with linux it's very very stable has way better battery life when it comes to um when it comes to the longevity of it uh but it's going to be restrictive 
meaning you can't really do anything. You can't download apps or anything like that. You're going to have Google Play. You're going to have you're going to have app stores. You're going to have just millions of different things you can do on Android. Whereas Linux, you just can't do that. You 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 cannot do that because for the most part, nobody uses Linux and note taking. Uh, even Supernote, they use they still use Android. They use I think it's Shovey uh, or something. The the Supernote line uses Android. It's still Android. They don't allow you to download apps, but they still use Android. In terms of e-reading, uh, Linux, 100%. In terms of note-taking, Android. I would say Android is just more... Uh, it's, it's more powerful for the most part. It's a more robust operating system. It would be better to just stick with Android. And evidently, uh, Onyx, Boyu, Supernote, um, who else uses it? Uh, uh, S Sony D DPT. DPT uses Android, uh, Fujitsu uses Android, I mean, uh, MobiScribe, oh, yeah, yeah, they do, yeah, they do, because they're based off of the, um, Netronics, uh, the Netronics 6.8, yeah, so, everyone uses Android, Android for note-taking, uh, Linux for e-reading, typically, that's, that's, like, the, the typical rule of thumb, is that, that's how you want to kind of go about things. Uh, long presses on your library. Yes, you can long press and you got a lot of things you can do. You can lock it. You can use it as a custom cover. You can delete it. You can share it. When you do share it, it's going to open up everything that's on your unit. So if you have one note, if you have nearby share via Bluetooth, the QR code, you can email it to yourself. So as you have done things like this, even with your notepad, you can export and share your entire notepad and it'll create a file. And you can just share it. it. It turned the whole thing into a PDF. And I can send that over. So, for example, someone sends you something. And it says, hey, sign on the dotted line. Well, typically, you have to print it out. Put the piece of paper on your desk. Sign it. Scan it. And then email it back. With this, you honestly could just do your little signature. You know, whatever your signature is. And then you can go down here to share it. Or you can share it from the you can share it from the the main menu, and you can share the, share the single page via an image or an entire PDF to your you know your bank, your mortgage, whatever the case may be. Because after you share it, they get it with the actual signature. I mean, that's your handwritten writing on the screen. And these devices started out in 2013 with the Sony DPT. And it was like $1,400. And that's what they started out doing was there for legal institutions and like, uh, you know, educational institutions and stuff like that. And they were to replace paper, to replace having all of these stacks and stacks of ledgers of paper and just keeping everything digital because it was way quicker. It was way safer. You know, couldn't burn in a fire. Well, I'm sure this could burn in a fire. So, uh, but yeah, you know what I mean? It's okay i'm not i was gonna say it's better for the earth but it is and it isn't because the lithium mining and all the materials and magnesium that goes into this it's like is that really better for anything um yeah so i, I don't know uh senel antonio says is a is better an e-reader independently of note digital or an e-reader note correct that's a good one too uh we have many people that say they want They, they want to separate it. So for their note-taking experience, they'd buy a Nova. And for their e-reader, they'd buy like a like a pocketbook uh, ink pad. And why that is is because with an e-reader, uh, with, with, yeah, with an e-reader, like we said, the battery is going to last way longer because all it does is read books. Whereas as you've seen, the note-taking slate uses a lot more battery. I didn't even check, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't 62% when we started this video. I think it was in the 70s, which means I already went down a tenth in just this showcase alone, which is only like 45 minutes so far. So this is going to use way more battery. I'm going to do like a, can I do like a half full battery? Yeah. This is use way more battery because it has Android, it has Google Play, and it's got the Google Play, it's got the Google Framework on this too, which means it's there's a lot of stuff running on this. Whereas an e-reader, typically nothing runs in the background. It's just a normal e-reading experience. So 
that's the downside of having uh, a note-taking e-reader as your primary. Although you could do it. Obviously, you can. You can buy this. You can read notes. And you can just use it as an e-reader. You can turn off pretty much everything you want. You can turn off the sound. You can turn off the glow light. You can turn off notifications. So, I mean, it's like you can make it as distraction free as you want uh my oh, adrian says that did you <laughs> did you have a, a like a, a cheeseburger no i did not have a cheeseburger today <laughs> but uh i may i don't know I and mean, we got some pretty good donations i might head over to grab me a burger after that no i'm just kidding i would never do that uh seno antonio muchisimas thanks that's not spanish is it or is that portuguese or i don't know I mean, I thought it was like muchas gracias or something like that, but could be a uh, could be the difference between thanks and thank you. But yeah, um, yeah. So you can use this as an e-reader, and that was a lot of the things that was uh, between um, people buy wanting to buy a uh, what do you call a remarkable is that they said, oh, it's distraction free. Well, you can make anything distraction free if you just turn everything off. I can turn the Wi-Fi off, the Bluetooth off. I can go into settings and disable all my notifications. And then I have a device that's better than the Remarkable. So it's just, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to poo-poo on the Remarkable, but just people think it's this be-all, end-all of devices when it's just a little more trouble than it's worth. And especially now that you have to pay a monthly fee on your credit card to even use it. So um, this is the second week in a row, by the way that uh onyx has won the polls and we are going to without you know in no negative way possible we're probably gonna not ah it's portuguese yes thank you i i thought it was portuguese because it's like i've never seen that in spanish at least i don't know spanish but i can kind of discern the, the differences a little bit uh onyx has won twice we've given you guys a choice of four things we put the re-ink stone in the top joy on there for crying out loud too and you guys are like no let's do some onyx so uh, next week's poll, or the poll that we're going to launch right after this for next week's live show, we are not going to put an Onyx on there. Reason being, we only we already did the Lumi, and I think we did the Air too as well. And now we're doing the Nova Air. Pardon me. So no one else is getting any other, other chance and other opportunity to uh, showcase their device. So we're not going to put Onyx on the next one. We're not going to put like the, the Note 5. Because to be completely honest, it's going to be more of the same thing. So we're probably going to do uh, Boyu P10, and a lot of you guys were asking about the Pocketbook Light, which we do have, of course. We can show you that. And um, we're also going to put the uh, uh, Big Me on there, because they are using the new color Sony panel that was, uh, you know, driving everyone insane at the beginning of this year. We put that video up not even a year ago. I think it launched in, like, March or something, and in, like, seven months... Uh, I think it got like 500,000 views or something just on like a one, two minute video. So yeah. Um, Santiago Minera Patino said color device, please. We, we might just do that. We, we, we're going to have a poll to give you guys options. We're not going to like not listen to the poll, but at the same point, mm, okay. We're going to have to talk about it because we might just show the DPT color because, okay, it's a big me, but to be completely honest, it's the DPT color panel that we saw. We saw the Kaleido 2 10.3 inch, uh, 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 those only, yeah, with Wacom, with Wacom panel at the trade show in Tokyo earlier this year. And all these companies, you know, rushed in. You know, like Fujitsu was looking at it. They're like, oh man, and they didn't get it. And then Sony's looking at it. They're like, oh boy, and they didn't get it. A company did come in and get it, the Big Me. Big Me got the panel. They went to these guys, Linfini, they got the panel, and they said, I want it. So they took the Big Me B1 Pro, they took that new panel that Sony was supposed to grab, and they put it in the Big Me B1 Pro Plus. So, we might just show that off, but we'll still do a poll. We'll, we'll, we'll put that in the poll. But yeah, no more Onyx stuff. Uh, Onyx is great, do not get me wrong. Onyx is fantastic. They are very clearly on paper, spec for spec, probably the best, they're, they're the highest spec devices. I mean, you can't argue with numbers. 
on paper, these guys have the highest specs. They're the fastest. They're the quickest. They have the top of the chart um, uh, track record. They, 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 they celebrated their diamond anniversary, which means 10 years. These guys have lasted forever. They've released so many units this year. You know what? Before we wrap up, I don't even know how many devices they released this year. What did they release this year? Uh, so they got... It's going to be fun. Well, fun for me. <laughs> they got the Note 5. They got the Air 2, they got the Lumi 2, they got the 13.3 inch Mira, uh, they got the Note X in China only, they got the, uh, the, 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 the Books Leaf, Books Leaf, didn't get the color this year, did they? No. One, two, three, four, five, six, there's six devices already. Am I missing something? Oh, gee. <laughs> this. <laughs> the Nova Air. They, did, they released seven devices this year. And it's, that's just it's ridiculous. During, during, I might add, right now they have a chip shortage, a component shortage, and a uh, rolling blackouts of um, uh, production plants in uh, China right now. So as you are trying to produce your items not only is there a shortage of all these things epds and everything like people can't get enough displays to even make their units um they uh they're they're just they're they're they're, they're absolutely seemingly unaffected by anything that's happening right now and they release some new units that are only for the russian market uh, they, they got these weird names like the Luminos and the, the Chekhov and all that kind of stuff. I don't know the exact names. But they're only for, like, these markets. So they have a lot of devices um, under their belts. It's absolutely insane right now what they're doing. But, uh, yeah, this is the Nova Air, everyone. Um, this was a, a, a terrible live, I do admit, because we had some massive audio issues earlier on. I don't know what it was. Um, it was obviously my error, of course. But uh, it's been rectified and... Um, during this week's live, when we do the uh, month end wrap up with Michael, we are going to, uh, he knows how to do all this OBS stuff better than me. So um, it'll be uh, uh, optimized for all you guys uh, this coming Saturday. Yes, Saturday at 4.30 p.m. PST. We'll put that up. Uh, we're going to be going over everything. And there's a lot to go over because we did. We had the paper whites come out, the, the Sage, all that kind of stuff, the Libra. So anyways, this is the Nova Air. Uh, I understand it's hard to find this. It's hard to, uh, you know, get your hands on it. A lot of people on YouTube are saying this is like one of the best note-taking devices of the year. I, I personally don't think so. It's good, but it's it's too small for any real world app, real world application. It just it's too small, and that's the consensus of most people, and that's why the bigger screens exist. But in terms of a well packaged, you know, bite size unit. You can't beat a 7.8. Everyone uses 7.8. Supernote, Boyu, Onyx. Every everyone uses 7.8 because uh, it's 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 so easy and it's a good balance between price, functionality, uh, purpose. It's it's a great it's a great unit. It's not going to break the bank. If you want a Note Air, you can grab one from our site. You can grab one from Onyx. It all comes from the same place because we're a distributor of theirs. And if you guys have any other questions you need to ask, you can ask after this. And um. Thank you for all of the questions. Oh, we have a question come in before we wrapped up. Stephen Prosser, I have one question about the new Big Me with English added. Can I download Google Play Store to it and use it in Canada? Basically, same as I would use an Onyx device, but with color. You know what? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you can put Google on it. You can sideload your, your own apps in. So... If you, it's got a, it's got an app installer. So if you download Kindle and you download OneNote and you download whatever, you put it on there because it's got Android 11 on the Big Me. Uh, we are going to show that next week, hopefully. Oh, the Nova 3 color was March. That's right. Okay, so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight devices this year, Onyx. It's mental. Companies like Boyu have eliminated their entire line of devices because they can't get their hands on components. Supernote got rid of half their lineup and they're facing massive delays. And Onyx released eight units. 
like it's just silly but anyways uh thank you steven for uh answering that uh yeah steven i don't know man uh we're, we're, like i said we're doing we did the nova air this week because we already had the poll but um uh they're doing the uh the b-roll on the uh the the big me sony panel so it should be it should be done today actually it should be it's still early on in the day it's only uh it's only 12 a.m here <laughs> 12 p.m here 11 a.m 11 30 a.m what am I talking about? What time is it? Oh, 11.57. Okay. So it's 11.57 a.m. right now. So it's 12 p.m. Uh, we got a lot of day, daylight left. And uh, we should have that video up soon. And uh, actually, the contest for the... I don't know what they put up. Uh, they put a contest up for something. Uh, there's a contest on YouTube. It runs out tomorrow, I think. So get in on that. Uh, we're going to have one-week contests, everybody. We, we told you guys that last time. Uh, we're not slowing down on that. Kobo has dropped some stuff off at our... Um, at our uh what do you call it? um uh, offices for us to give away more stuff i kid you not so the next one is going to be a kobo device as well uh senel antonio says the ghost effects on drawing is getting better in the kale color kaleido you mean uh sorry i don't understand that one uh hurry, hurry up and maybe re-ask that one i'm not sure what you mean um, yeah, so we have one week contests. We're going to be doing that till the end of the year. We're going to be doing a live this week and we'll be doing a live next week as well. Um, every single week we'll be doing this on Thursday. So if you guys have any uh, questions or what you want to get in as a recommendation, hit us up on the polls. We'll be having Facebook polls and YouTube polls as well. So we can um, give you guys a little bit more choice in what you want to see. So yeah, no more. Uh, no more. Oh, Kaleido. Okay, so yeah. Yes. Uh, You'll, you'll see in the video, uh, Senel, Antonio, Briones, Castillo, you will see in the video that um, the uh, Kaleido 2, way better than Kaleido 1. Kaleido 1 on the Big Me, really blown up, it didn't, didn't look good because Big Me was and is the only guys to use the big screen tech because they're the only company big enough in china they're big in the world they're they're nobody and big me no one even knows what that is they weren't even in english till we talked to them so um yeah the 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 big me kaleido one was terrible the kaleido two looks good looks really good that's why we're, we're spending our time on this review on it because uh we're getting some really high res images 4k images we're going to be doing like some pans and stuff we got the we got uh the the masters doing that for the the b-roll section so yeah uh thank you guys very much it's been a uh, very terrible hour i'm i apologize once more about the uh, technical delays we're gonna cut that um for the vod but uh yeah you guys are great and um we appreciate the donations although we do not require them i uh, just want to let you guys know that you're free to watch this you're free to comment free to weigh in free to ask your questions you don't have to pay for it or anything like that Thank you very much. You guys have been amazing. We'll see you next week for the live. And we'll see you in a couple days for the month end wrap up for uh, everything you read related for Michael and I. Thanks so much. We got to wait like 18 seconds, remember, to end it. That was fun. Thank you all.